we have been hearing about the snooping by various government agencies using Pegasus in the recent past. In this episode, Team PB and J will decode the spyware threat to individuals and nation states. This episode is sponsored by Neodocs, a one-stop digital healthcare solution on your smartphone. You can find the link in the description below and know more about Neodocs' innovation. By now, all of, us have, all of us have heard of Pegasus, not in a mythological context, but in a rather infamous scandal. The spyware is developed by Israel's NSO group, which claims that the software's intended use is to prevent terrorist activities by spying on suspects, to track down criminals involved in sex and drug trafficking, money laundering, kidnapping, etc., and also provide support during natural disasters and other situations, such as earthquakes, floods, fires, infrastructure damage, etc. The software caught public attention when more than 50,000 phone numbers targeted by the spyware were leaked by the Amnesty International and Forbidden Stories Group. Ten countries are currently regarded as NSO clients. In the list of suspected Pegasus targets, more than 300 numbers belong to Indian journalists, opposition leaders, political activists, etc. One thing to note would be that to buy NSO services, Israel De Defense Department's approval is needed, and the tool is sold only to national governments. The list of NSO clients are the countries with which PM Benjamin Netanyahu wanted to improve relations with, and this is raising a lot of eyebrows across the globe. It would be interesting to see if the Indian government did deploy the spyware and if yes, and then in what capacity. As for today's discussion, we will discuss on how any spyware is able to get access of our devices and data. Let us understand how Pegasus or any spyware actually works. The Pegasus software works by first installing the soft spyware on the target device. This can be done by either tricking the user to click on a URL link commonly called as the mechanism of spear phishing that can be sent through email, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, etc. Oftentimes, we are not aware of the sender or the contents and are deceived by this method. Second method is to install Pegasus using existing vulnerabilities on our devices. What exactly are these vulnerabilities will be discussed in a moment. Once installed, the spyware can exploit several vulnerabilities of our devices to access data such as photos, emails, contacts, calendar events, etc. It can also access sensors available on our smartphones such as mic, camera, GPS, etc. This data can be relayed back to a server or computer where it can be saved for surveillance purpose. The mechanism of infecting a device with a spyware and exploiting data is almost the same for any spyware. There are different companies providing different spyware products. These products differ in the target devices, such as laptops, phones, tablets, wearables, and the target software, such as Skype or Apple's iMessage service, etc. <laughs> in the past, these tools have been utilized to track criminal and terrorists. And one of the most famous examples is the use of Pegasus to track down the Mexican drug lord, El Chapo. However, it was later revealed that the, even the Mexican drug cartel used Pegasus to target and intimidate journalists. Here we can see that both state and non-state actors are using this powerful tool. The question that beckons our attention then is whether anyone is safe from this menace. It also highlights the unethical, unintended, and unjust use of such spywares against the system or in repressions. Now let us understand the source of vulnerabilities in any digital product. For that, let us see in how an app is developed. An application downloaded on a smartphone comprises of two major components, the smartphone app and the cloud servers. The smartphone, ser the smartphone serves as an interface where we can input information into the app, either manually or through sensors in our smartphone, such as cameras, mics, etc. Smartphone is also used to display the results to the user. The server responds to data received from the smartphone by either storing it, processing it, or sending transformed results to the user. <laughs> All of this is essentially developed using softwares that perform the intended action. These software reside both in the smartphone and the cloud servers. For example, 
whenever we enter a username or password to log in into the app the software running on a smartphone receives the email id and password typed in by the user it then sends this information to the server for verification the server is running another software which verifies this information and if this information is correct the server sends a signal to the smartphone to proceed to the next relevant screen now that we are aware that software are fundamental to any app let us understand how softwares are built to give you an analogy if i have to buy a shirt i would go to a shop of my preference and buy a shirt i would not worry about how the cotton was cultivated how the fabric was made how it was transformed into a shirt or how the shirt was dyed for me the final purpose is to buy a shirt from that shop similarly if i have to write a software to achieve a particular task i won't have to write the software to handle every small detail that goes into the task here comes the concept of open source software open source softwares or as they are called oss are developed by individuals all across the globe that provide a variety of services and tasks that are very helpful to software developers oss contributors could be any software developers across the globe which gives this community a lot of power oss helps companies reduce your software development time in the sense that they have to develop and focus only on high level tasks it allows better resource allocation to tasks that are actually important since the this community is open and transparent any unstable version of the software is instantly pointed out so that the community can contribute towards improving the software also if there is an issue with a particular oss and i don't want to use it for a particular reason, uh, reason there are several alternate present as well a fun exercise for all our users would be to open our whatsapp application on our smartphones and view the licenses under the help section this would give us an idea of what oss licenses or what oss softwares are utilized within the whatsapp application the use of oss is not only limited to apps that we use but also phone manufacturers like apple samsung sony etc use open source softwares to build the operating system for their devices to summarize any modern day digital product that we have uses open source software to implement features that are useful to us but these open source softwares often times comes with vulnerabilities these vulnerabilities can be of different natures they can range from providing exposure to our smartphone content to unauthorized individuals they can provide access to data stored on the phone they can provide access to sensors such as camera mic gps or other sensing devices it is believed that apple's oss apple's os had a vulnerability which allowed root access users to unauthorized apps and this was the major reason what the, why the pegasus software was able to exploit this vulnerability and hack apple's smartphones in the earlier stages of the software there are several institutions and companies such as <coughs> such as the us government's national vulnerability database snick or black duck that continuously monitor these vulnerabilities and provide this data to companies so that they can improve their apps and digital products and they can be safer for users these vulnerability databases categorize vulnerabilities according to their threat levels such as critical high medium or low to represent the threat level posed by these vulnerabilities to the final users a very good example of a corporation efficiently tracking and resolving vulnerabilities in this product in its products would be whatsapp it provides the list and details of the potential threat or, or vulnerabilities identified in its system for a user this showed the commitment of whatsapp to deliver safe products and the active actions taken by whatsapp towards this commitment lastly i would like to discuss what actions can be taken to protect ourselves in the age of digital spywares it is definitely true that a lot of responsibility do falls on corporations to provide products that are safe and secure and not only provide the intended purpose or the intended service to users such as ordering a pizza or booking a ride but also addresses non functional requirements such as providing software that is free of fatal vulnerabilities companies also need to be ethical as to who they sell or provide data to as we had seen in the case of cambridge analytica data in the wrong hands can skew the power balance in the society 
as individuals, we can follow the digital security tips suggested by Amnesty International. Companies that monitor and address vulnerabilities in their products actively provide app or software updates. We should ensure that the digital products we use run on the latest version. Using app managers to generate hard passwords for our accounts on different apps and storing these passwords on our devices in an encrypted fashion is an important step. Enabling two-factor authentication when logging in into a service in the form of a OTP confirmation or clicking on a confirmation link can reduce the chances of being hacked or on a thrice access. Deleting an app on internet, deleting our data on internet, which is not currently used, such as unused accounts or apps, can reduce the chances of data leaks that we are not aware of. Securing our phones with complex passwords or fingerprints can be a way to stop unintended access into our devices when we are not aware of, or in the worst case of losing our devices. Using a VPN can provide anonymity when browsing the web so that our activities cannot be linked to us. Downloading apps that are from trusted companies or that we are aware of, and also clicking on links or attachments that we are entirely sure of can be a way of avoiding deceiving tactics used by spyware companies. Lastly, the recent news that brought around the international use of Pegasus can be very intimidating. Not only does it challenge our faith in the democratic institution, but it also makes us wary of digital products and services that we use on a daily basis. It is important uh, to uh, realize that it is very difficult to entirely cut down the use of these products or services, but we can be definitely become responsible and educated customers. I hope that today's video gave you an idea of where do the vulnerabilities lie in a digital product and you are able to safeguard yourself using the tips provided. That is all from our side and we'll be back again with another interesting topic. Thank you.